Well, this month, the first ever female was accepted onto the team of highly trained police officers that make up Los Angeles' SWAT team. Many say this is long overdue, but this morning, others are speaking out against it, saying putting women on the team put the men in danger. Senior law and justice correspondent Jim Avila has more on this. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Chris. The issue for some is standards. Did the nation's premier SWAT team lower them to be politically correct and make it possible for the first woman in three decades of SWAT to qualify? Some of the current team wives think so. <laughs> Tracy Melchior, a soap opera actress and wife of a veteran Los Angeles Police Department SWAT officer. She has never been worried about him as much as she is today, enough to write the Los Angeles police chief a scorching email after he announced the required tests for LA SWAT are being changed to give women a fairer chance. Quote, we will not sit quietly by and allow you to compromise our husband's safety. We're not talking about recess and everybody gets a chance at kickball. SWAT, the very name, has a macho ring to it. And in Los Angeles, where the nation's first special weapons and tactics unit began its rigorous training 37 years ago, it has served with distinction, even fame. From the shootout with Patty Hearst kidnappers in 1974, they are opening fire right now. To the 1997 street battle with heavily armed bank robbers in North Hollywood. So renowned, it had its own TV show. But through it all, it wasn't just the name that was macho. L.A. SWAT has never had a woman in its ranks, ever. What is the big deal about the fact there isn't a woman in SWAT? What's the big deal? What's, what's that say to anyone? Do you think the public gives a damn? Former L.A. Police Chief Daryl Gates is often called the father of SWAT, and despite his reaction, the lack of women on the elite 43-man SWAT team has in fact caused quite an uproar, starting with a man who now has Gates' old job, Chief William Bratton, who made it clear he wants a woman on SWAT soon, when he ordered a thorough review and plainly stated, I would like to see women in every part of the Los Angeles Police Department and fully expect we will see women on the SWAT unit. This is... Somebody's father or somebody's husband did not come home one night. The wives of SWAT certainly think it's a big deal, especially after L.A. SWAT's first officer fatality in February, when one team member was critically injured in a shootout and the other killed trying to save him. It's not that women against women. There's a certain standard that needs to be met, and we want a woman to meet that. We will be cheering her on. The LAPD's review of SWAT, however, is critical of the SWAT culture, calling it insular self-referential and resistant to change. It recommends less emphasis on confrontation and more emphasis on negotiation. And it says women in SWAT would help, not hurt. Margaret Moore is a former SWAT team supervisor for the federal agency Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. You're not lowering standards, you're actually enhancing your standards by incorporating a diverse group of people working together with many different perspectives, bringing you know, different talents. The proposed new testing for L.A. SWAT eliminates some physical tests. Wives like Tracy Melchior say strength is critical and worry women won't be strong enough to pull injured teammates to safety. When our husband, the father of our children, goes in that house with anybody, whether it's a female or a male officer, they need to meet the standard to be able to do that job. That way, you know, the likelihood of our husband coming home just increases. L.A. SWAT leaders say the changes in the test that de-emphasize that grueling marine obstacle course and put new, important, uh, new importance on hostage negotiation techniques will actually make for a stronger, safer SWAT. LAPD says that obstacle course was more a rite of passage that led to injuries for men and women applicants than it was more of a training tool. So tactics are one thing. The question is, what was it on the test that tripped the women up here, Jim? What was well, it? Well, it, it, the Marine Obstacle Course was the most difficult part, and it, it tripped both men and women up, mm. but it, was all, it was really was the thing that weeded out um, every woman that applied, and there weren't that many. And the problem with the Obstacle Course, according to uh, what the uh, police department is saying now, is that it really had nothing to do with, uh, with the SWAT duties. It was really a rite of passage. It was a way to weed out people and it, we, and it weeded out women for too long. So it's not about the job, it was just about this rite of passage. I Jim, appreciate the perspective on this this morning. Of course, we want to know what you think, so go to abcnews.com, weigh in, and we'll talk about it.
in a flash be the first to know what's coming up on Good Morning America tomorrow with the GMA Daily Flash email. All the great insider details you want to know from GMA. Go to abcnews.com, click the GMA page, and sign up for the Daily Flash. And you can even enter to win the weekly GMA Flash gift bag giveaway. Sign up now.